Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to the second part of our nervous system series. This vodcast is going to discuss the two major divisions of the nervous system, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So you got to remember, the nervous system is what coordinates everything between your brain and the body. And nothing in our body would work without the nervous system. So our muscles and organs and glands don't work if we don't have anything connecting them to the brain. So let's take a look at an overview of the nervous system. Okay, so the nervous system's main job is to maintain a state in the body called homeostasis, which we talked about before. Remember, homeostasis is when the body is trying to keep everything the same. So homeo sounds like homo, which means the same, and stasis has the word stay in it, so it's kind of easy to remember to stay the same. So we want to keep the same body temperature, the same oxygen levels, the same water levels. And the nervous system maintains homeostasis by detecting changes in the environment called stimuli. So when the environment changes, our body's going to react to it to maintain everything at the proper order. For example, you're nice and cool inside your air-conditioned house, and then you walk outside, and it's 90 degrees outside, and your body starts sweating. Well, the change in the environment was the air temperature making your body warmer. And as a result, to keep your body at 98.6 degrees, your skin starts to sweat, and that sweat evaporates off of your body to make you cool. The stimuli the change in the environment, the warmer temperatures, cause the change in your body to try to keep your body temperature the same. Because if you overheat, you can get heat stroke and things will go bad at that point. In order to maintain this homeostasis by detecting the stimuli, our nervous system coordinates two divisions. We have our central nervous system and then we have our peripheral nervous system. Our central nervous system includes the spinal cord and the brain. The spinal cord basically connects the brain to the body, and the brain controls everything and coordinates all the body's activities, and the brain itself is broken up into three parts. We have the cerebrum, the brainstem, and the cerebellum. And then our peripheral nervous system is made of the nerves outside of the central nervous system. So these are the nerves that run out from the spinal cord, and there are two groups of them. We have voluntary peripheral nerves, which are called somatic nerves, and then we have involuntary peripheral nerves, called autonomic nerves. The autonomic nerves sound like the word automatic, which means they happen on their own, which is exactly what an involuntary function is. That's an easy way to remember the difference between an autonomic nerve and a somatic nerve in the peripheral nervous system. So let's take a closer look at these divisions here. Okay, so here we have a picture of the central nervous system. And the central nervous system is easy to remember because the central nervous system basically tells you where these components are found. They're found in the center of the body. So if we take a look at this picture here, you'll notice that the brain, located here, is located in the center of the body and is connected to the spinal cord that runs down the middle of your back. Now, the brain has various functions to it. If we take a closer look at the brain, we can take a look at the three parts and what they do. Your brain has the cerebrum, which is this large section of the brain at the top here. I always remember it looking like a boxing mitt. And then we have the cerebellum right underneath the cerebrum. And then you have the brain stem. And the brain stem sounds exactly what it is. It looks like a stem that's attached to the brain. Kind of like a, how a stem is attached to a flower. So in the cerebrum up top here, as you can see, it's got a lot of different functions to it. And it's actually broken up into different lobes. However, the functions of the cerebrum include sensory information. All of your senses are processed here. You walk into a house and you smell chocolate chip cookies. It's your brain that determines that it's chocolate chip cookies or that you smell. You taste those chocolate chip cookies and you think, mmm, they're delicious. That's your brain processing the delicious taste of chocolate chip cookies. Okay, the sight of chocolate chip cookies. You walk in and you see the chocolate chip cookies and it's your brain that says, hey, those are chocolate chip cookies because they match that information with images that you learned about chocolate chip cookies and then the touch of them you know if the chocolate chip cookies are hot then you know not to pick it up if they're cool then you know to pick it up and they're rough and and whatnot and then lastly hearing anything that you hear maybe your mother calling you to come get these brand new chocolate chip cookies that gets all processed by the brain so all of your senses are processed by the brain and that's what tells you what those things are now, in addition to sensory information processing, we have learning and memorization. So whenever you learn something like how delicious chocolate chip cookies are, and you memorize what they look like and taste like and smell like, that occurs in the different areas of the cerebrum as well. The cerebrum also takes place of language and comprehension. 
and also speech. So the fact that you're able to understand what your friend is saying and then able to respond back to them is controlled by the cerebrum. And then lastly, your personality is found here. If you're a funny guy or girl, it's because that personality has developed inside of your cerebrum. If you are an intense competitor on the athletic field, that's your cerebrum that develops that type of sense. So your cerebrum is an extremely powerful center of the brain and it has the most jobs to do. Now the cerebellum is pretty basic. It controls the balance and coordination of your movements. So if you really want to test your cerebellum, you can stand up right now out of your chair and stand on one foot. And when you stand on one foot, you'll feel the foot that is on the ground is shifting back and forth to make sure that your legs are staying balanced and that you don't fall down. That would be the cerebellum receiving information and sending information out from the brain and to the body to make sure your leg stays put so you don't fall down because you don't want to get hurt. And then lastly, we have the brain stem. The brain stem controls all of the involuntary functions that our body takes care of that we don't necessarily think about. So as your heart is beating right now while you're watching this vodcast, that's your brain stem taking care of that. Now that you're digesting your, digesting your lunch or your breakfast, that's your brain stem taking care of that digestive process. And also your breathing, so your body can make energy. And that, again, is your brain stem taking care of your breathing. So the brainstem really takes care of all the functions that we don't necessarily need to think about that are very important to us. So that's the brain and the parts of the brain and the jobs of the brain in the central nervous system. Now if we go back, the central nervous system, as we said before, includes the spinal cord and the spinal cord acts like a relay center. Now the spinal cord needs to relay information out to our peripheral nervous system. And this is what our peripheral nervous system looks like. Your brain comes up with a signal inside of it and sends it down. So for example, you want to grab a book. So obviously you need the arm muscles in your body to get activated to grab the book and lift it up and open it up. So your brain sends a signal down the spinal cord and then in order to get to the arm muscles you need connecting nerves and that's what the peripheral nervous system does. It connects the central nervous system to the rest of your body. As we get connection to our arms, our biceps flex to pick up the book and then the different muscles in our forearms and hands open up the book and then we can read and start processing the information through our brain. So the peripheral nervous system is just all these different nerves that are on the outside of the spinal cord or attached to the spinal cord. That's it. That's all the peripheral nervous system is. And there's two sections to it. We have a somatic nervous system, and our somatic nervous system controls voluntary functions. So remember, when we talked about it earlier this year, voluntary functions are functions that you can control. Like, if your friend tells you a joke and you smile, that's a somatic nervous system function. If you are jumping up and down in basketball, that's a somatic nervous system function. If you are walking to class, that's a somatic function, talking with your friends, that's another somatic function and so forth. So all the things and, and functions that you can control in the movements, that's your somatic peripheral nervous system at work. However, we do have our autonomic nervous system. Okay, our autonomic nervous system, again, means automatic and it controls all the involuntary functions that happen automatically that we don't think about. These functions include things such as breathing. We don't have to think about it, although we can, but for the most part we don't think about our breathing, so it's autonomic. Our heartbeat. The reason why your heart beats all day long and we don't think about it is because the autonomic nervous system takes care of that. Digestion. Okay, the food that you're digesting right now is happening automatically because your autonomic peripheral nervous system is at work. And also things such as hormone release. So if you eat something sugary or just dumped a lot of carbs into your body at breakfast or at lunch, your autonomic nervous system is telling the pancreas to release insulin to let that sugar into the body. Or if you see a bear in the woods, 
It's your autonomic nervous system that kicks in the adrenal glands to produce adrenaline and get that flowing through the blood so you can run as fast as you can and jump as high as you can and, and give you the best shot to get away from that danger. Boys and girls, those are the two major parts of the nervous system, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Thank you very much.